the problems relating to love. There is no ready-made answer to any problem that one faces in life on a day-to-day -day basis. The answer is the response of the master for the particular seeker's innerness and understanding. He responds to the seeker. The master can only share his insights and develops consciousness in you so that you grow in awareness and learn to handle all situations that life brings. Every moment life brings a new situation. Certain situations are acceptable while others are unacceptable. Life is full of mysteries. You can only learn to live with such mysteries but never try to solve. These we call stumbles in life. However, along inward path, there are never stumbles, instead stepping stones. Look at a situation. There is a game of football between two teams. Only one team can, only one team can win while the other will be the runner-up. There is only one victory. However, some will rejoice the victory while others lament. The situation is one victory for one team and defeat for the other. However, each reacts differently in such situations that life presents. It is because of individual attachments to one situation that we feel pain or pleasure. Similar is the situation of relationships in life. Problems relating to love in life. Problems relating to any situation where a relationship is formed. The life of a Buddha requires for one to go beyond all attachments and dualities. This is the state of suchness or witnessing. One cannot go beyond dualities of pain and pleasure without understanding certain things. Remember, understanding brings first witnessing and then transformation. These steps are consciousness, understanding, witnessing and transformation. Then you understand that life is a play and we are simply actors performing on the stage that life presents. We perform various roles. An actor performing a role in a play may die. The death on the stage is not the death of the actor. Instead, it is the death of a role that the individual actor was performing. Such is the nature of life. One moment, a role as a lover, as a husband, as a wife, as a beloved, as a friend, comes to an end. This is life. We have to learn that you are more than a particular role that you are performing. You have performed many roles in your life. Role as friends, role as lover, as beloved, as husband, as wife, and many other roles. We have to learn to perform each role without any attachment. Only then there can be totality in your role. Such is the nature of life. Things become complicated when ego comes to play its role and instead of learning how to relate to a person or situation, we are interested in relationships and giving it a name and form. Relating is a woo, a process, while relationship is now stationary. You have to understand certain things for this. Love is painful because it creates the way for bliss. 
the nature of relationships and living partners love is painful because it creates the way for bliss indeed love is painful because it transforms love is mutation each transformation is going to be painful because the old has to be left out for the new the old is familiar secure safe the new is absolutely unknown you will be moving in an uncharted ocean you cannot use your mind with the new with the old the mind is skillful the mind can only the mind can function only with the old with the new the mind becomes utterly useful and incapable hence fear arises the fear of leaving the old the comfortable safe world the world of convenience when this happens pain arises it is the same pain that child feels when he is coming out of the womb of the mother it is the same pain that the bird feels when it is coming out of the egg it is the same pain that the bird feels when it will try for the first time to be on the wings but then the bird enjoys riding on the wings the fear of the unknown and the security of the known the insecurity of the unknown the unpredictability of the unknown makes one very frightened and that is where when we feel that everything is losing its fabric for us and because the the transformation is going to be from the self towards a state of no self agony is very deep but you cannot have ecstasy without going through agony if the gold wants to be purified it has to pass through the fire if gold wants to be purified it has to pass through the fire and love is fire it is because of pain of love millions of people live in loveless life they do suffer and their suffering is futile to suffer in love is not to suffer in vain to suffer in love is creative it takes you to higher levels of consciousness to suffer without love is utterly waste it leads you nowhere it keeps you moving in the same vicious circle the man who is without love is closed he is narcissistic he knows only himself and how much he can know himself if he has not known the other because only the other can function as a mirror when you enter into the process of relating to someone the other becomes the mirror and when you look into the mirror you can see only your face for instance the person whom you are going to meet runs a little late now you are hurt so what happens when you are hurt your face becomes ugly there is ugly exchange of words although the person may be innocent thus each time you relate to the person the other becomes a mirror for you to look at your face how far you have grown into awareness you will never know yourself without knowing the other love is very fundamental for self knowing as well the person who has not known the other in deep love in intense passion is in utter ecstasy will not be able to know who he is because he will not have the mirror to see his own reflection 
relationship is a mirror and the purer the love is the higher the love is the better the mirror the cleaner the mirror but the higher love needs that you should be open the higher love needs you to be vulnerable you have to drop your armors that is painful you have not to be constantly on guard you have to drop the calculating mind you have to risk you have to live dangerously the other can hurt you that is the fear in being vulnerable the other can reject you that is the fear in being loved the reflection that you will find in the other of your own self may be ugly that is the anxiety avoid the mirror but by avoiding the mirror you are not going to become beautiful by avoiding the situation you are not going to grow either the challenge has to be taken one has to go into love that is the first step towards god and it cannot be bypassed those who try to bypass the step of love will never reach god that is absolutely necessary because you become aware of your totality only when you are provoked by the presence of the other when your presence is enhanced by the presence of the other when you are brought out of your narcissistic closed world under the open sky love is an open sky to be in love is to be on the wings but certainly the unbounded sky creates the fear fear when you look downwards fear when you look around that there seems to be no end and to drop the ego is very painful because you have been taught to cultivate the ego as your armor we think ego is our only treasure we have been protecting it we have been decorating it in various ways we have been continuously polishing it and when love knocks at the door all that is needed to fall in love is to put aside ego certainly it is painful it is your whole life's work it is all that you have created this ugly ego this idea that i am separate from the existence this idea is ugly because it is untrue the idea is illusion but our society exists is based on this idea that each person is a person not a presence remember you are a presence as an individual not a person there are many presences you are a presence i am a presence so is everyone a presence not a person presence is more sublime the truth is that there is no person at all in the world there is only presence you are not not as an ego separate from the whole you are part of the whole the whole penetrates you the whole breathes in you pulsates in you the whole is your life love gives you the first experience of being in tune with something that is not your ego love gives you the first lesson that you can fall into harmony with someone who has never been part of your ego if you can be in harmony with a woman if you can be in harmony with a friend with a man if you can be in harmony with your child or with your mother why why can't you be in harmony with all human beings and if to be in harmony with a single person gives you so much joy 
what will be the outcome if you are in harmony with all the beings you are in harmony with me you are in love with me why can't you be in love with all that is surrounds you and if you can be in harmony with all human beings why can't you in harmony with animals and birds and trees and circumstances and situation then one step leads to another indeed love is a ladder it starts with one person it ends with totality love is the beginning god is the end and to be afraid of love to be afraid of growing to be afraid of the growing pains of love is to remain enclosed in a dark cell modern man is living in a dark cell and is he is narcissistic narcissism is the greatest obsession of the modern mind and then there are problems problems which are meaningless there are problems which are creative because they lead you to higher consciousness higher rungs of awareness there are problems which lead you nowhere they simply keep you tethered they simply keep you in your old mess love creates problems indeed it does you can avoid those problems by avoiding love but those are very essential problems they have to be faced and countered they have to be lived and gone through and gone beyond and to go beyond the way is through love is the only real thing worth doing all else is secondary if it helps love it is good all else is just a dream love is the end so whatsoever the pain go into love if you do not go into love as many people have decided then you are stuck with yourself then your life is not a pilgrimage then your life is not a river going to the ocean instead your life is a stagnant pool dirty and soon there will be nothing but dirt and mud and moss to keep clean one needs to keep flowing a river remains clean because it goes on flowing flow is the process of remaining continuously virgin flow is the process of remaining continuously virgin allower remains virgin for ever all lovers are virgin indeed the people who have never loved can never remain virgin because they become dormant and stagnant they start stinking sooner or later and sooner than later because they have nothing to do nowhere to go life is dead that is where the modern mind modern man finds himself and because of this all kind of neuroses all kind of madnesses have become rampant psychological illness have taken epidemic proportions it is no more than a few individuals are psychologically ill the reality is the whole earth has become a madhouse the whole of humanity is suffering from such kind of neurosis and the neurosis is coming from your narcissistic stagnancy everyone is stuck with one's own illusion of having a separate self then people go mad and this madness is meaningless unproductive uncreative or people start committing suicide those suicides are also unproductive uncreative you may not commit suicide by taking poison or jumping 
from a cliff or by shooting yourself but you can commit suicide which is very slow process and that is what happens very few people commit suicide suddenly others have decided for a slow suicide gradually slowing slowly and slowly they die but almost the tendency to be suicidal has become universal this is no way to live and the reason the fundamental reason is we have forgotten the language of love we are no more courageous enough to go in that adventure that is called love hence people are interested in sex because sex is not risky it is momentary you go you do not get involved in it. love is an involvement it is a commitment it is not momentary it takes roots and it can be forever it can be a lifelong involvement love needs intimacy and only when you are intimate does the other become a mirror when you meet sexually with a person male or female man or a woman you have not met at all in fact you avoided the soul of the other person you just used the body and escape and the other used your body and escape as well you never became intimate enough to reveal each other's original face indeed it is painful but don't avoid it if you avoid it you have avoided the greatest opportunity to grow to go into it suffer love because through this suffering comes great ecstasy yes there is agony but out of agony ecstasy is born yes you will have to die as an ego but if you can die as an ego you will be born as god as a buddha and love will give you the first taste tongue tip taste of tao of sufism of zen love will give you the first proof that god is that life is not meaningless the people who say that life is meaningless are the people who have not known love all that they are saying is that their life has missed love let there be pain let there be suffering go through the dark night and you will reach to the beautiful dawn and then the sunrise it is only in the womb of the dark night that sun evolves it is only through the dark night that the morning comes my whole approach is that of love i teach only love and only love and nothing else you can forget about god that is just an empty word you can forget about prayers because they are only rituals imposed by others on you love is the natural prayer the only prayer not imposed by anyone it evolves out of the deepest core of your being you are born with it love is the true god love is the only prayer not the god of theologians but the god of buddhas god of jesus god of muhammad god of the sufis love is the way tarika a method the way to kill you as a separate individual as ego and to help you to become the infinite unfathomable disappear as dew drop and become the ocean you will have to pass through the door of hell and certainly when it one starts disappearing like a dew drop and one has lived long as a dew drop it hurts because one has been thinking i am this and now that is going it hurts indeed because one has been thinking i am this and now this is going i am dying you are not dying 
but only an illusion is dying. You have become identified with this illusion. True. But the illusion is a still illusion. And only when the illusion is gone, you will be able to see who you are. And that revolution brings you to the ultimate peak of joy, bliss, celebration, benediction, and the essence of your life, the essence of your being, the essence of your, the fragrance of your innerness. That is the way of Buddha. Only this much 